Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura. And what do you do when you find really cute frog fabric? Well, you make a frog quilt. The fabric is from Timeless Treasures and it has these very fun frogs. So I've pulled in a green to go with it and some red polka dots. We need to make six snowball blocks. These will become the lily pads and six frogs to sit on the lily pads. Let's start with the very simple, quick snowball blocks. For each of the snowball blocks, we're going to start with six nine inch squares. The corner of the snowball blocks are made from three inch squares. We need one for each corner. Draw a line from corner to corner on each of those squares. The squares are going to fit right in the corners and the lines will go on the diagonal and they will become stitching lines. All four squares just will need to be stitched from corner to corner. Then you can trim off a little bit of this corner, leave a quarter inch seam allowance, and when that block folds back, you still have the original nine inch square with these little corner pieces. And we need six of these. Next, we need six frogs. The frogs are paper pieced. There are two sides to the paper piecing. The sides are the same, they're just in reverse. I'll put a link in the description so you can print out the frog patterns. I like to print these pieces on paper piecing paper. Your needle will stitch through well, it's easy to remove, and it doesn't dull your needle as quick. With paper piecing, I do like to use a Microtech needle. 8012 is a good size, it's nice and big, so it's going to make some good size holes to make that paper easier to tear off. And I'm going to be using the paper piecing thread from Coats. It's actually designed for paper piecing. It's thin and it's very strong. I like to use a ruler called at a quarter. And what it has is a little lip, that's the quarter inch, and a piece of template plastic. And that template plastic is going to go up against that quarter inch lip. A small pressing mat right by my machine with a small little travel iron. When I set up the machine, I'm going to be using a smaller stitch. It puts more holes through the paper which makes it easier to remove. To cut out my fabric for my paper piecing, I'll start and make an extra copy of the pattern that I need. I will cut out each of these shapes. With paper piecing, the good side of the fabric will be shown onto the back of that paper. So for example, this A3, I need some shapes, but they're going to be so that the good side is on the back. This does not have the seam allowance, so we need to make sure that we add more than a quarter inch all the way around. And I just cut them out very roughly, but this way I know that I'm going to have pieces big enough. There's the next size that I've cut out. Once I have all the pieces cut out, I'm going to lay them over top of pages so that I can just look at them at a glance and know which ones to take first. I need six of each side made so when I put them together I will have six blocks. I will bring this right to the machine. I have my six pieces already printed out on the paper and my six pieces of fabric that are going to match. The pieces are sewn together in order of the numbers. So the A is referring to this side, and the numbers are the order that you need to do the stitching, or you're placing the fabric in that order. If you have an artificial light source, like a light box, or a light table, this is a perfect time to use it. Using the light source, I'm going to take my page and lay it right over top. The printing is facing up. Because I've already taken and cut all of my pieces out, I know I need to start with the A1. So I'll take one of the A1s and I'm going to lay it down so that the right side is facing down and this is the wrong side. I put on the light source and I'm able to put my paper right over top of it. I can see my A1 piece is completely covered and I have a nice big seam allowance. The first block I like to pin or glue down. If I'm going to use a glue, it's only going to be temporary. It's just enough to hold it down until I get my next piece in order. 
I am going to glue this down, but what I'm going to do is glue it on the outside of the fabric so I have no glue inside of the actual pattern. It's just going to be on the edge where I get to trim it off. So I can just put that glue on there and then lay it back down. With the very first piece, there is no stitching. You're going to stitch number one and number two together. Between the A1 and 2, we need to make that quarter inch seam allowance. This is where the acrylic template plastic comes in handy. I'm going to lay it on the line between the A1 and A2. Fold the paper back using that as a guide. This is going to be my seam allowance. I want to trim it down to a quarter inch. That lip on that quarter inch ruler will fit right against that template plastic along the back. I'm going to be able to trim off this extra fabric and leave a quarter inch seam allowance. And having that first piece glued down is really helpful. This particular light table does come with an additional cutting surface that I can lay right over top. So I'm going to be able to trim right over top of this. If not, just bring it to your cutting table. When I've trimmed off that piece, I'm going to be able to fold that paper right back. Now I know I have my quarter inch seam allowance. I still have extra along the outside. My next piece is going to be A2. And I know this piece is going to go underneath. The two pieces are going to come together this way, but I still have my quarter inch seam allowance ready. I can flip it over. This is going to be a stitching line, but you're going to stitch from the other side. You're going to stitch with the pins underneath. So you need to make sure that those heads are out of the way and the pins are not in the seam allowance. Now when you turn it over, you're going to be able to stitch right along that line. You're stitching through the paper and those two layers of fabric underneath. So I started the stitching off, gone through that line, and I've come off again. And when I turn it over, there's my perfect quarter seam allowance. The pins were not in the way. I can take those pins out of the way now and press. Your pressing is always going to go towards the very last piece that you put on. Once one and two are done, I need to do piece number three. And in this case, it's a piece coming right here. I want to establish that quarter inch seam allowance between pieces one and two and three. Flip it over so that you can see the printing facing you. I know where my next stitching line is, and that's where I'm going to put the edge of that template plastic. I get to fold that paper back now, and I'm just going to peel that paper gently off of those first couple of stitches that I did that was past the seam allowance. This is going to be my next seam, so I need to make this the quarter inch. So what we're doing is we're establishing quarter inches as we go along. I put my quarter inch adder ruler on and it butts right up against that template plastic inside so it gives me that quarter inch seam allowance. And cut off all that extra. Fold my paper back and I need to pick up my A3 piece. With my light source, I can check and make sure that that piece is going to be big enough. I hold the paper and the piece together, flip it over, and since this was the last seam I cut, I know this is going to be the seam that I need to sew. Put right sides together. This is going to be my stitching line, so I'm going to pin out of the way and stitch on that next stitching line. I like to start off, follow the line, and continue right off. Turn it to the back and then press towards that last piece that you've put on. And this is when these little irons come in handy. If we look back, we can see that each of these seams are now going to have that nice quarter inch seam allowance, which we love to see and work with. As I turn it over, I now need to go to my four square. And I'm gonna continue this. I'm gonna fold it back, trim your seam allowance off, and you're good to grab your A4 piece. I'm going to be able to continue this method all the way until I finish all seven pieces. And I'm going to do this to both the right and the left sides. We now have two sides of the frog done. When they're trimmed and sewn together, they will turn out like this. 
So we need to sew these two pieces together. When you do print these with your printer, I'd recommend just putting on a draft print because you don't need a lot of ink on them because we are going to take the paper away and just leave your setting at 100%. And by doing that, you're going to be able to trim these off. And this is a quarter inch seam allowance. Now it's starting to make a little bit more sense. Match the right sides together and stitch that quarter inch. When that center seam is done, we're going to be able to remove the paper, open it up, and press it. I do take this seam in the center and press it open and flat. To remove the paper, I like to hold right where that seam starts, and that way I'm holding those threads together and the seams together, and then peel that paper back. It's just going to secure it that you don't rip those stitches out. You're going to be able to just take that paper right off. Because that was trimmed all following the paper, the block is squared and ready to go. And we have six frogs. And the blocks are nine inches square. We have six lily pads and six frogs. The quilt is going to go together in rows of three and you will have four rows. The frogs do not have to go all in the same direction. Press the frog seams to the lily pads. I'm going to add two simple borders around the outside. The first one is going to be cut at an inch and a half, so it will equal an inch. From there, I'm going to add a really fun border at four inches all the way around. I'm going to have these fun frogs going all the way around as the last border. The quilt is 35 inches by 44 inches long, and that is including that 4 inch cut border and the inch and a half. There's five different colors in the quilt. We have two for the frogs, two for the lily pads, and the lily pads share that border than that one additional border. Each of them I would recommend to start with a half a yard to get this quilt. A total of 12 blocks, six lily pads and six frogs. Now this could be made in many different color combinations, but the frog fabric was awfully cute. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.